are back! And I apologize if I was loud, but... <laughs> anyway, this is part two of Frosted Glacier, and I do believe we are now tackling the ghost house. This one's a swearing, swaying ghost house. I thought, I said, did I say swearing? Oh my god, why did I do that? Anyway, the reason why it's a swaying ghost house, because it's going to be moving one direction, and then it's going to move to another. Anyway, I have to make sure to get the first star coin, because I need that. And what do you know, I got that. That was actually pretty easy. What you're actually seeing is that's only going to show you how to get the secret exit. And there is a reason for this. Why? Well, how do I put this in the right words? Some levels, like the ghost house you see right here, you actually need to get the secret exit in order to get your hands on the third star coin. And this is just me fooling around because I just thought I would show you every single level there is. I'm just saying because, quite frankly, I make this look easy. I really do make it look easy. Like that. I make it look ridiculously easy. Anyway, let's continue. I already showed you what it is. It's basically an opportunity that if you get, like, lots of coins, this way you get extra lives. And you're going to need a lot of the extra lives. Now, instead, we're going to be taking the top entrance, the top right. Yeah, the only reason why I'm like this at the moment is because, quite frankly, I'm in a slump. Don't ask why. I'll just post it in the next channel update explaining that. Anyway, let's keep on moving. And anyway, I'm going to keep on taking here. I have to take this passageway here because you need to take the one on the left here. Yeah, there's a reason for that because you need to get, I think, star coin number two. You're going to need number two quite... Anyway, that's <laughs> never mind. I can't believe I said that. Anyway, you need to keep on running. You need to run as fast as possible. Why do I say that? Because you need to use these platforms that are moving with you so that we can get star coin number two. And like that, I make it look easy. I make it look ridiculously easy. And if you don't believe me... Just wait till you see me get the regular exit. You're gonna flip at how fast I did it. Though, quite frankly, any speedrunner would probably get jealous of me, but whatever. I don't think it matters. Anyway, let's keep on moving and keep on going since now we need to take different passageways. Yes, I could say that there's like different ways, though, quite frankly, you already know. You need to take the bottom right where it's hidden so that way you can take it. Anyway, this last part here, to get the secret exit, you need to jump up top, hit the switch, and you need to stay in the middle and keep on jumping. The more you jump, the further higher you go. And if you reach high enough, you should be able to reach a secret passage up there, like what I did, quite frankly, and that was ridiculously easy, and you'll be able to make it. Now, here's the best part of it. Not only do you get access to, I think, the secret exit, but you also get your hands on star coin number three. When I first did this and I was running out of time, I was so totally angry. And thank God for that, I got all three coins. And I make it look easy, too. And you want to know what the best part about this is? I suffer no damage either, and that to me is really good. Anyway, I keep on going. I hit a P-switch so that way I can just follow the trail of coins. And I get an extra one-up, and I'm already at 97 lives. And with that, we get the secret passage that occurs when you unlock the secret exit. Yeah, I always say that all the time because this is unscripted to let you know. And I really mess up when I make, like, ah, say my lines. So anyway, let's see where this leads us. And quite frankly, it's a long path. Now, why do I say this? Because most of the secret exits that you beat afterwards lead you, I think, to passageways that either lead you to World 5 or World 6. I don't know. It's just me. But anyway, let's head back in there, and you're going to watch at me at my finest, at my best. Sit back and enjoy.
Did you like it? I made it look easy and I completed the course in a hundred seconds or less. I would have just bragged about it, but I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, I unlocked passageway into the castle, which is all that remains. And I decided to just pick a fight with these cooligans because I need at least some extra items. Though all they'll ever give you is stars, and I don't think they really do give you much. Though basically what I just do here is just stand in this one spot, fire fireballs, and that's it. It's ridiculously easy, and if you notice the life counter up above on the top left, that means I have about 99 lives, and no taking off the cap here. Forget it. And this is where, at this point, I have one too many items. At certain points in the game where you need to make a difficult choice, you need to give up an item that you already have. Yeah, that sucks. But anyway, let's now tackle the secret passage, since, quite frank, I mean the secret area. I apologize if I keep messing up my lines, but what can you do? Anyway, here it is, Flipperous Lake, and let me tell you, Flipperous Lake is, quite frankly, one of the worst levels, secret levels I've ever dealt with, because of one simple reason, these Flipperous Seals. These Flipperous Seals are just ridiculously annoying to deal with. Not only that, but there are also these platforms that when you reach low enough, at a certain point, you can time your jump and be able to reach higher than before. Though with the piranha plants who like 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 blowing out these spike balls, just shoot a ice flower at them and they'll freeze, and that's about it. Though I'm really trying to figure out how all of it works, it really didn't, believe me. Anyway, I decided instead to take the high road. I gotta watch out for the flippers right there, because these flippers are annoying. You wanna know what the worst thing about this level? Yeah, I forgot to mention one other thing. You don't have much time! You really don't have much time here, and I was literally flipping out over what I need to do. And yes, this is just a really bad case of trying to figure out what the hell you need to do. I apologize if I repeat that. I got sidetracked. But you get my point. Quite frankly, this is where I begin to screw up, and I decide to just rely on luck just so I can make it. Fortunately, I got another Ice Flower. Not that I'm complaining in any regard, but I'm trying my hardest at this level, and I think this is where I run out of time, and I'm like... You know what? Screw it. Just get the star coins and get it over with. Because quite frankly, you're gonna run out of time. I got star coin number one, which is a good thing. Now, number two. Number two is gonna be a real pain in the butt. And there's a flipperus up there, and he's shooting out these snowballs. And I got hit. Not that it matters since I get an ice flower afterwards. Yeah. I, there are two things I should mention in secret levels like these. The secret areas with these levels that help you unlock in a higher. There are two things you need to know. Number one, there are no checkpoints. At all. And number two, if you lose a life in a checkpoint, you have to go through the entire level all over again. That's lame. More lamer than Sonic 06 with Kingdom Valley. That sucks. Anyway, I got star coin number two, but I'm running low in time, and time is something, unfortunately, I don't have. Made worse by the fact that if I don't do something fast, I got hit, so that sucks for me. And at least the invincibility ran out, and I was able to get out of there, so... So much for that, Flipperus. Oh yeah, no, wait, no, I made a mess up, I apologize. And I timed it up right, and I wasn't thinking straight. I was thinking, if this is the area here, then I thought, no, that's not it. And I'm already down to about less than 120 seconds. Yeah, this is the first time in a level where I'm actually flipping out, and I don't really know what to do. Though I believe later on in World 6 and 7, there aren't that many secret passages left. Because quite frankly, this is the last portion here. And... Alright, I made up with the third star coin, since you need to time your jumps. That when you reach at a high enough distance, you time your jump, and you'll be able to reach it at the pit of it. And now the music's sped up, since I'm running out of time as it is. Come on already, I want to get out of here, because if it hits zero, I lose a life, and that's going to add to my death count. And it's not because of the fact that I lost a life, it's because of the fact I ran out of time. And with that, I completed with only 76 seconds left. Do you blame me because I'm at least trying? I doubt it, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. I got all the star coins, only one level remains, and I'll be able to finish it once and for all. So, it looks like we access a, a pathway. This one leads to World 6! Well, what do you know? It leads you to World 6, Rock Candy Mines, which I will cover later on. And like in every previous run I do whenever there's a save option, I don't save whatsoever. I really don't save. So anyway, now let's head back all the way up, and now we tackle the last one. Frosted Glacier's Castle. 
and an appropriate name, Wending Shifting Castle. Now, ask yourself, why is it shifting? Yeah, these platforms that you see that move either up, above, or below are the main focus of this level. Basically, you need to keep on moving, and sometimes you're going to have to go under so that way you'll be able to reach, like, the bottom area. Fortunately, I did, because I need to get myself a much-deserved ice flower, but you're going to see how it's going to be useful here. And not only that, there's also one more situation you have to contend with. You also have to contend with thwomps and thwimps. You never seen a thwimp? You haven't seen a thwimp since, I think, Super Mario World. Though I wonder if they were in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. I don't know if they were in NSMB2, because I'm not going to complain about that, because that one, I believe, is too ridiculously short. Anyway, to get the first star coin here, you just need to move for the thwimp, and then you time your wall jump. Pretty simple. Anyway, you keep on going, passing the checkpoint, and that's no big deal here. And you gotta watch out here, because I think at this point, because now you have to deal with these thwops. Just wait for the platforms to, like, rise up, and then you run. If you time your move too late, you're gonna end up in a bottomless pit, and that will hurt you. Anyway, to get this second coin here, I think you need to, like, time your jump right. Yeah, what was it? Oh, wait, I forgot. You need to time your jump above. Oh, yeah, I also forget. You can't even freeze these thwimps either. So anyway, as I was saying, I was saying to myself where to get the second star coin, I forget. Anyway, I just decided to head upwards so that way, I thought to myself, what's the point of collecting coins if you already have like about 99 lives? You already have 99 lives, so I'm not complaining here. Anyway, I keep on moving, I keep on going, and this is where I think, this is where you get the second star coin. Because there's like a whole row of thwimps. So you need to time your movement on the thwimps just right, so that way you can be able to reach the second platform. Oh, wait, there's a hidden passageway. I had no idea there was, but whatever. Anyway, you just keep on moving, wait for the plinth to move, and then you jump up and you hit this block, and you'll be able to reach the green pipe up above. Like that. And once you reach the pipe up above, there's going to be like a whole group of thwimps that are going to be moving in a set pattern. Once they move right, the rest will follow. So use it to your advantage so that way you can be able to reach the second coin. Like that. But when you have to go back, you need to be very, very careful, because if you get hit by a thwimp, that's going to be bad. I really took my time on this because I didn't want to get hit, and thank the lord that I just jumped up, swing, and then head down. Yeah, I used the always the boost jump because that helps. Anyway, to get the last and final star coin, that happens at the very end where there's like one like huge like path, like, you know those line paths? Right there. You see that right there? That's the green pipe down below on the bottom right. Now you need to wait till the platform rises. Fortunately, if you move far enough away, I just wanted to show you that you can't freeze thwimps. Anyway, you keep on going down, and that was too close, quoting Lando Calrissian. And you make it to the green pipe down below, and your counters a hidden area. Now for this one here, you gotta make sure this giant plomp goes down. And like that, you get star coin number three. And so far, I haven't gotten even hit once. If I'm lucky, I could basically clear the level without taking damage. I'm not complaining for that, but hey, I'm at least enjoying this, quite frankly. Anyway, we reach the big door, and this is all just a major chase scene where you need to follow the coins and run as fast as possible so you can make it to the end. And there you go, we made it. I believe we're actually doing quite better. Though, this is just a sign of what is yet to come. Believe me. Wow, looks like Cootie Pie's got herself a big Cootie ship. Whoa. Wait, what am I saying? They aren't that hard, really, though we have to deal now with Cootie Pie Koopa. Or Wendy Koopa. Yeah, I have to go by the names of the cartoon, so sue me. And she decides to change the battlefield up to reflect the level. Now, here's the deal here with the strategy. She's going to launch two rings at you. And these rings will hit star tights up above, so that way it'll strike down and hit you. You could basically freeze her, but that's not a recommendation. Though I do have one complaint with this level. If you if you jump way too high when she jumps, and you'll end up hitting the stalactite, and that'll be bad for you. And you don't want to go through that, right? That's why I learned it the hard way. Only wait till she drops from her jump, and then you attack. That's my only strategy I have for you. Other than that, she's pretty easy, and despite the fact that I nearly lost, I'm not complaining. <laughs> And with that, we complete World 4, and I already got all three Star Coins. Bad luck for you, Coop Bowser. Yeah, I really am fibbing. But either way, Wendy just sung her last song. Nice knowing ya, Cootie Pie. Cootie Pie, I think, is a ploy on Cutie Pie, but whatever. Anyway, that's about it. Yay! And we unlock the pathway to World 5. 
And we got all the star coins on Frosted Glacier. We'll see that happen later on. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time, and I'll see you all later when we take care of the next world. Later!